Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to read and write to Ethernet I.O. using the Control Logics and Compact Logics PLC. For this video, we are using our standard Compact Logics Industrial Control Panel Trainer, and we're actually using a custom Control Logics Trainer. And I'll put links to these in the description. But I like this particular example because this is something I ran into once out in the field. Now, you may not agree completely with what was done here, and I didn't agree with it, but it's something you should know that you can do. Is on our control logics here, we have a processor. This is an L63 processor. And okay, it has a fault light, but that's for another video. Don't worry about it. And then we have an ethernet module and we have a DC input and a DC output module. Now, when I walk up and I view this, I will make a big assumption that this processor is controlling this input and this output module. But with this processor in here, I'm actually going to control these two modules with this Compact Logics PLC. So let's set this up in our program. Now, unlike our produce and consume tag lesson, where we needed to set up a program for station one and station two. In this case, we're only going to set up one program, and that will be for this Compact Logics. So let's create a new program, and this will be a 1769 L16ER BB1B, and we'll just call this Ethernet IO. And we have zero expansion modules, finish. And then on our left pane, go down into the IO configuration and go to our ethernet. And let's right click it. And we're gonna create a new module. Now let's say that we're not sure what this module is. We can open up RS links. And then if we browse to it, and I can see by what is scrolling across here that the IP address of this is 192.168.117. So if we scroll down and find 192.168.117, we see that it is a 1756ENBT. And we can right click it and we can see the device properties and see that it is revision 5.001. So in Studio 5000, let's type ENBT. And there is the 1756 ENBT. So we're going to select it and create. And revision there is 5.001. We could change it if we had an older or newer revision. And our IP address is going to be 192.168.117. And it says here, what slot is it in? And this is important. So we are going to be in slot one. And we'll select okay. Oops, I forgot to put a name on it. And again, typically we want this name to be memorable. Now in this case, we actually do have a compact logic and a control logic, so it almost makes sense to put control logics, but I, I, I don't think I can bring myself to do that. So I am just gonna say that this is station seven, because I just can't bring myself to do it. And actually this is the seventh trainer in the PLC lab. So we'll click okay. And now on our IO configuration here, we can see there is the 1769L16, which is what this program is written in. And then we have a 1756ENBT. And then inside of it, we have its backplane, which is this chassis right here. Now, I made a mistake when I configured this because, see, it says it's an A17 chassis. Well, no, that, that would be the number of slots. This is not a 17-slot chassis. This is a 7-slot chassis. So let's right click it, Oop, close that dialog out, and now let's right click that and go to properties. And right here, I browsed over it saying that you could change your revision. Well, also there's that chassis size. So we need to hit the change button and change our chassis size to a seven slot chassis. Okay. 
And now it shows an A7, we have an A7. And we're gonna right click it and create a new module. And in this case, we're not gonna put this PLC in. We're just gonna put this input and this output module. And again, if we're not sure what they are, we can browse them in RS links. So I can open up this ENBT and there is our backplane. And right there, slot two is a 1756IB16. And I can right click it, device properties, and see that it's 2.004. So let's type in a 1756IB16. And we've got a few options here, but this was a very basic IB16. So we're gonna create it. And we'll call this our station seven inputs. And it's gonna ask what slot we're gonna put it in. We're gonna put this in slot two. Now you notice slot zero is missing and that's because we've already assigned it to the ENBT. And then actually it shouldn't matter. And we're gonna leave this alone. If you notice back here, if I went to properties of that IB16, I've got 2.004. The revision specified here is 3.001, but also electronic keying is compatible module. And I do believe that'll be a compatible module. So we may have to come back and fix this, but let's put okay on that. Okay, and now we're gonna create another one. We're gonna create this output module, which was an OB16E. And if we right click it, it is revision 2.004. So we're going to put in an OB16E, and there it is. So we'll create, and this will be our station seven outputs. And it's gonna be slot three. And all right, just in case, I don't want to have to change it twice. What was that, 2.004? I'm going to change this one. So our revision is going to be 2.004. We'll click OK. And let's go ahead and download this program. Now, if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers, just look down in the description. We have lessons on all of that. And then let's put our processor back into run mode. And oh, okay, I was wrong. The major revision does need to match even on these. And so right now, our IO not responding is on. And if we look down through our IO configuration, slot two, that IB16 has got a little yellow triangle by it. If we right click it and go to properties, and then we go to our connection tab, then it's going to say electronic keying mismatch, major or minor revision invalid or incorrect. So if I go back to general and change, oh, okay, it's not going to allow me to change the revision while I'm online, but it will allow me to disable the keying. So let's disable the keying. And now our IO is going to be okay. I'm not so sure that it's a good idea to disable the keying. Normally I would not do that. So let's go through how we can fix that if we saw that wrong. So let's go offline and then right click that module and go to properties. And we're going to change our revision to two. And then we are going to go back to compatible module. And now we'll download that. Now the question will probably come up based off what I just did is obviously 3.0 is the latest firmware for this particular module. And this has an older firmware in it. Now, should you update the firmware in it? Well, it depends. And kind of my thing is if you're not looking for a new feature or it's not a new install, then you probably need to evaluate whether it really needs to be updated. In this case, I also use this for the L63, and that could be why I have a firmware revision 2 in it. I'm not really sure, because we, we kind of change firmwares depending on what we're doing. 
Now that could be why, but so I'm not going to upgrade the firmware because it's already existing. Now our I.O. is OK. And if we open up our controller tags and we look down, we have station 7 colon 2 colon I. So that's station 7. 2 would be slot 2. So 0, 1, 2. There's our inputs. And if I open it up and I open on up our data, we see that we already have a 1 in a few boxes. So this red button here is normally closed and you see station two, data two here. If I press it, it's gonna to go to a zero. Let off, it's gonna go back. So here's our green button, it's zero, then one. And we got some selector switches. And somewhere down here, obviously we have probably the e-stop. This one, yes, the other one is the e-stop. That's the one that's on. We can read our inputs from it now. And also, if we go down to slot three, that is this output module here. And I know that output zero on it is going to be our green light. So if I type a one into it, our green light's going to come on. So now, over Ethernet, we can control these two modules in this PLC, even though it has a processor in it that we would think is controlling all the modules. Also, I've got this faulted right now for another video. If it was not faulted, if it had an IOK, -okay, you'd see all OK lights through here. So mentally, you would think that this is controlling all of it. But this is something I ran into somewhere. It's some, so it's something I like to bring up is you kind of need to pay attention sometimes to what is in this I.O. configuration over here. But let's go ahead. Let's take this a step further. Well, since we were here, let's go ahead and write a, let's make it a start stop. Let's make it where you hit the green button, the green light comes on, and you hit the red button, and it turns back off. We've done that many times, so let's open up our main program, and we're going to put an examine on, and we're going to be looking at station 7, colon 2, colon i dot data dot zero and let's put a description on that that is going to be station seven green button and then let's put an output energized down and that's going to go to station seven colon three colon o dot data dot zero and that is going to be our green light. Oh, actually, that's a green light on station seven. So let's get a little more descriptive. Station seven, green light. And then we're going to put a branch around it. And we'll bring down another examine on. And we're going to look at that green light and then we're going to bring down another examine on and this time we're going to look at station 7 colon 2 colon i dot data dot 2. That is going to be station 7 red button. And this is the same start stop we have done many times. So we're going to put that into our compact logics program. Now remember, that's, we're working over here. We're controlling I.O. on this chassis over here. So now, if I press the green button, the green light comes on. I press the red button, the green light goes out. Now, if I press the green button, green light's on, and then I unplug our EMBT, the green light's gonna immediately go out and our IO now is not responding. Now notice though, in our program, the green light is still on, even though I can't communicate with it. So now I'm gonna plug it back in And if we give it a second for our IO OK to come back solid,
then our green light's going to come back on. Now, I'm not saying if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but mainly it is something that you should be aware of. And there are ways to handle it if you need the green light to go back off. And if you'd like to see a video on how to handle that, put it down in the description. So there's how to control specific points of I.O. on a Control Logics chassis with another PLC. And again, I don't think you'll ever run into this situation where you would see this setup that looks pretty cut and dry and something else is controlling the other two modules. But it is something I ran into somewhere. And so I thought I would share that while we're at it. So please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them down in the comments. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.